about because I'm not a big Blackboard fan, so I have to learn this. <laughs> yes, and sometimes it's it's a really powerful tool, and it's kind of intricate. So if you don't really know it, of course you wouldn't really like it. You know what I mean? Like it, you wouldn't be a big fan of it. But I think once you get to um, once you learn how to work it uh, and know the ins and outs, you're probably gonna like it because um, you can do a lot of things in Blackboard Collaborate that we can't do in Google Meets, you know? And I think Google Meets, it's easier, sometimes it's quicker, but you can do, there's cool functions, like breaking when you're live and collaborate with a group of students, you can have breakout groups or breakout sessions within um, and you can rant that will randomly select people for you and they'll have their own little little room where they can do group work so th those things are kind of cool all right so we got our little navigation pane here on the side we're going to scroll down to course tools and then right here you'll see a blackboard collaborate ultra i've never messed with the other blackboard collaborate i've just always clicked on this one when I used it. And you can see this one, BB training session. That's the link that I sent you guys. I'm not gonna go in there right this second because I'm gonna show you how to create a session. And it's pretty self-explanatory, right? So create session. You're gonna name your session. Test session. Looks great. And then- you create a session for do we create a session for each lesson or can I just say Miss Nauman's classes session and they always go back to that? So each class actually has an open collaborate. If you look right here, I'm gonna discard my changes. Right here, see this Mass Communication Foundations course room? If you, if you just wanna get into your courses collaborate session, you can absolutely just use that. If you want one that's just for you, you know, that's maybe you just have a permanent, hey, maybe you just have a permanent collaborate session where you're giving um, feedback or something. Um, it really depends on what you wanna do. Does that answer your question? Yes, so when we click for that course room one, when this we one. go to our courses at the very top of our navigation, we'll see that. Or do we have to get into course tools, collaborate ultra, click on the course, and then get to the course room? You, that's how we get into it, yes. If you want, though, if you wanted your students to always like have that there, I believe there is a function on your course's homepage where you can um, set it up however you want for them to navigate to things. Like sometimes, let me see, let me look over here. Let me go to the home page. So right here, let's go to the customize page and see what happens. Color palette, nope, not interested. Ew, no. I, was under the impression that we can put whatever we want over here. Hmm. Maybe not. But with that being said, you can get the link to your course, your course's collaborate page and like pin it to the top of an announcement or something or have it on standby or like bookmark it so that you know your students could always get to it quick if that is why you asked that. Just maybe so it's not like a cumbersome navigation. Right. Thank you so much. That helped a lot. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'm back in. I navigated the cumbersome way down to course tools. And I'm going to create a session. And we'll do this. Session. And if you want this link, you can click guest access. And the link will create, um, it will generate a link once we're done saving it. So like I was saying, Miss, um, is it Miss Newman? Am I saying that right? 
it's nomen, like you're telling your friend, no nah, man. No nah, man. Okay, I got it. I think I got it. Thank you. Um, so right here, if you want, maybe you wanted a collaborate session that that is there for the duration of the course. That's your very own. You know, you could label it Miss Nomen's. Um, let's see, Miss Nomen's feedback session, right? And maybe you just come here to give your students feedback, and they have this link for the whole time they're enrolled in your course. And when you're like, hit me up on our on our collaborate so that we can, you know, have a chat. And you guys will always have that. Um, so you will want to click guest access if you want the link. And like this is where this is where you can make it for 15 minutes, an hour, 15 days, or no end, an open session. If you're like CMC and you know you have or Pax Q ADL and you know that you have um, every week you're gonna get on collaborate to talk to your class. Um, you can repeat it for the same time however you want to do that. Like I'll show you. You can repeat it weekly. Oh every time I go to click down on a menu button, it it pops up on my other screen and it's really annoying. So repeat re weekly every week. You could do it like every two weeks, um, whichever day you want. And for the duration of your course, so I know the CMC DL course is eight weeks. So you could repeat the meeting for eight weeks, right? You see this end after occurrences, I would put eight in here. I would always leave this one on early entry, 15 minutes before start time, because why not? And if you want to provide a description, you know, this is strictly for, this is for your individual feedback. Hey. All right, now you see that I clicked create, we have this link right here and it's copied and you can shoot that to your students so they can always access it whenever they'd like. All right. You guys wanna go navigate to the Blackboard training session that I sent you guys so we can mess around in there? <laughs> oh, hey there. Can you guys see yourself in that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Let me mouse over four screens. Got it. Oh, I think I can. Can you, thank you because I um, copied the guest link for Miss, Miss Nauman's feedback. <laughs> All right. So we don't need a bunch of folks. Um, not everyone has to come, just uh, a few people that are just wonderful um, volunteers so that we can check out some of these functions. Okay, so we are in Collaborate. Just like Google Meets, ooh, I'm hearing myself. And I think it's because of Collaborate. Noxious. Okay, so just like Google Meets, we have these, we have our mute, our microphone, um, share a video or raise our hand. Over here, if we click on this little hamburger, we can start recording. We can report an issue. Tell me about Collaborate, Collaborate help, and we can leave our session. Um, was I just gonna tell you guys something cool about this? It, no, it wasn't the groups. It was something else that I wanted to show them. I forget. All right. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you is that like if students wanted to talk to each other in um, we can edit our session and like let them directly message each other and you can make anyone a moderator like so if we want someone to take over a class, I believe 
I'm a moderator. So let's see, we have Andy over here. I can make him a presenter. If students need to present um, for an assignment, you can make them a presenter. If you want them to be able to um, make breakout groups, you can make anyone you'd like, or maybe another instructor is on with you on Collaborate, you can make them a moderator as well. You can send chat messages in here. Look, so I had um, and Andy Smith selected, and I can directly message him. Be there. Hope he responds. Yes. <laughs> but once somebody, once you make someone a presenter and or a moderator, they can change the status of another individual? Just the moderators can. Just um, the moderators can change. Yes, ma'am. What else can we do? Let's go over here. All right. Where's our when you breakout? say it has breakout rooms, which can randomly break out, can you also design the cultivated to be particular students in different breakout rooms? Yes, you can. You absolutely can. You can make you can make uh, students in their own like if you wanted specific people to be in a group, you can do that, or you can make it happen randomly. Randomly. Um. Let's see here. how to do it all right in my settings i've got audio video report and shoot chat support and these oh no it's out of that um, it's not oh this is it okay so in share content, which is a little weird, doesn't seem like it would be under that. Um, you have these, this, this is your breakout groups. So I'll click on breakout groups and right here, Ms. Norman, it's randomly assigned. And like I said, I'm having that issue with my drop down menu, or you can, so it's on my other screen that you can see, or you can select the users. Um, here, if you want, you can include yourself right? And then you can have how many groups do you want, right? Do you want two groups of five? You can do that. You can allow your attendees to switch groups. Um, so here, look, it has group one and group two. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to start this, and it's going to automatically move you guys into separate rooms. And did you say for how long? To move uh, I did not. I did not say for how long. Like, how do you get them back? You end the breakout session. Just end it. Okay. Where are you in your little room? Uh, yes, I think I am. Andy, Matthew, Mr. Carmichael. Okay, cool. Oh, and I'm with you guys too. Sweet. All right. Um, I think I can. And so as a moderator, right? So I'm teaching and I want to just pop in and make sure that everything's going okay with all my groups. I'm going to come over here to this little, looks like a cell phone and an arrow. And I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go join group one. All right, group two, peace out. <laughs> Moving to group one. Hey, hey everyone. Hi. Hi. Yay. All right, so we see how that function works. Um, let me ask a question. Sergeant Pagan, can you share in your group right now? Are you, do you have access to present in your group or do I need to make you a presenter in order to do that? No, I can share. Want me to share? Sure. If you like it, I don't mind. Right on. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, you're freaking me out, man. Stop. Stop sharing. Thank you. I'm just kidding. All right. So breakout sessions are over. I'm going to click this stop button, and we're all going to magically go back to the main room. All 
All right, hello. Welcome back from your breakout session. Let's do some more things. Polling, you ready? Mm, how do we wanna do this? Do we wanna do a multiple choice? Sure. Are you ready for the weekend? Heck yes. And then heck yes. You guys don't get a choice here. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do, all right, I'll add a maybe. Is there anyone that's not ready for this weekend? I guess we'll figure it out. Here, I'll throw this guy out. No. All right. All right. So, oh, there we go. Maybe. Who's the maybe? <laughs> no. Oh, show responses. Let's see who you. Oh, can you guys see the responses on your end now? Yeah, and if I click hide responses, you cannot. You can only see what you did, right? Can you preload questions, or do you have to do it like in real time, like you just did it? Um, I actually do not know. I do not know. Oh, Tracy oh. said no preloads. Yeah, you can. No preloads. So what okay. we do is, yeah, we just put them on like a Word doc. And then we kind of have them ready to copy and paste real quick in there when you're doing them live. Because if you don't have it copied somewhere and paste, it takes you forever. Well, this, okay, that makes sense. That's a good workaround, Tracy. Uh, my question is asked, I use Kahoot a lot uh, for this kind of stuff. If mm -hmm. we wanted to still utilize a Kahoot, do they have to come out of Blackboard, collaborate, or we, and we send them to a link in the chat and they go do their Kahoot? Or is there a way to also kind of present that within the collaborate window? Were you asking about like sharing a Kahoot screen and collaborate or putting the questions into the polling? I'm confused. More Which, using the actual functionality of the Kahoot. Would that so be- put your Kahoot questions in? Or if I wanna share some program, whether it's interactive polling or whatever, a Kahoot, whatever, is there a way to display that here or do I take put the link in chat and we all go away from Blackboard Ultra, do that and come back? I don't know if I understand your question. Are you on, does anybody? For anyone that you just can explain it better for, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hold on, someone's coming to talk right. chat with so, so. Oh gosh. <laughs> Tracy has her hand up, so maybe she can answer the question. Maybe that's why she has it up. So you can share the screen for the Kahoot so they can see it, but no, there's no way for them to interact with it within Blackboard. They can see it, but then they would also need to be on Kahoot to be able to click on anything. It's basically right, just right. a display screen kind of like you have in uh, in Google Meets. It's basically Google Meets with more options. Okay, that makes sense, Eric, thank you. You're muted, Audrey, if you're talking. I wasn't. Um... I wasn't talking. I just wanted to make sure that. Um, well, now I guess I am talking. Miss um, Miss Nauman, did did that help you? Did, was that the answer to the probably not the answer you're looking for, but did it answer your question? Yeah, that helped me logistically understand how to set that up. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Alrighty. So, uh, blank whiteboards are almost like um, what do we use in Google? Google um, with the little Jamboard. Jamboards, right? Everybody knows what Jamboard is. This is kind of like that. Uh, students, if you're still in, or our students have the option to, you know, write on this however they want. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. And then I can erase it all. 
Can you guys erase it? Do you have the option as a uh, participant? Or you do? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Yay, what is this? <laughs> All right, you guys are doing great. You're doing real great. Oh, look, I can select it and move it. I'm learning with you, okay? Don't hate. Ooh, colors. You, you can also select just one piece and hit the delete key on your keyboard and it'll delete just that one piece. Because Ooh. if you... If you so it erases everything. So you just want one piece to go away. You have to select it and use the delete key on your keyboard. Thank you, Mr. Marco. That is extremely helpful. Wonder what this. All right, y'all are killing me. <laughs> no more whiteboard. <laughs> okay, what else? What else? It's like you took um, away everybody's crayons. <laughs> I sure did. It was making me go crazy, Mr. Marco. What else? Um, I think that's kind of. Some of the more powerful things that we would use um, to help augment our virtual training, you know? Um, is there anything that you think I missed in terms of collaborate that anybody would wanna share with the group? I think the only thing that I would say that is tough is that Power, PowerPoint slides are kind of tough in collaborate. So when we have instructors in ITC who want to use PowerPoint, it sort of stresses them out because they, they almost have to have like two systems so they can see their notes or they print their notes out. Um, so, you know, just think about what platform you're going to be pre presenting from and set yourself up to have success within whatever platform it is you're deciding to work in. And so that would be my best piece of advice is just understand that uh, what we've had students do is just either convert their PowerPoints over to Google so that they can see their notes makes it a lot easier or um, like I said, have a printout or have a second screen so they can see their notes when they're presenting. Thank you so much, Mr. Marco. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. That. Yeah. Well, could you actually share a slide? and show us how, what that would look like, like what the student's view is versus our view with the note. How does the presenter thing happen? So just like um, Mr. Marco said, when we share, we have to, when we share our files, we have to use PowerPoint. So um, I can open up. If PowerPoint doesn't work well. Oh, display screen, sure. Thank you. All right, so we have our entire screen or a window or a Chrome tab, right? So here's the slides that we had today. And I will share that with you. And it takes a second. Yeah, just give it a second. <laughs> there you go. And so if you had notes under that, Audrey, where where are your notes? You kind of have a whole other tab screen open on your monitor so that you could read any notes you had? For, so for these ones, I actually don't have any notes for it. But if you do, I'm sorry, if you do presenter view or um, if you're sharing your Google slides, right? And have, do you use them like that? And you when you go to present, you do presenter view. Do you use that function? Yes. Yes, yeah, so you'll have your slides on another screen and your students will be able to see what's on uh, Blackboard. So it's essentially the same. Okay, as if I have one screen like this, like in this situation, like where I just have just my one computer, I would just put my notes, my Google slide notes over the top of what the students see right there. Like I don't have to look at what they see because in my notes I can see what slide they're on. And then I can look at my notes. So I don't look at both what they're looking at and what I need to look at. I just put what I need to look at on top of what they're looking at. Okay, I think I, I think I get what you're doing. I'm just it's just like Audrey said, I think we just have to get used to it and do it a few times. Yeah, Audrey, did you show them how to pull out the attendees panel? Say again, Tracy. Did you show them how to pull out the attendees panel? What? I did not understand you because you're coming through the speakers and the projector. Did you guys hear? Okay. These the students right here. Yes. So yep. if you if you click on those little lines that are above the little people's heads in the bottom, 
these guys. Yep, click and hold and drag and pull that panel out. There you go. And then now as a presenter, you can see your slides or your notes are sitting on top of that. You can see your students and you can see the chat at the same time. And then if everybody goes to their little icon on the very bottom of your screen, the people who are in Collaborate, you go to the little icon where it's the little person there with the little green check mark, like you see that at the, at the bottom. If you click on that, just click on that icon. You see now oh, yes. the students that are there can hit the agree button if they agree with you. They can hit an emoji like if they're confused. Um, this is a way for you to, they can put that they're away if they have to go to the bathroom. Um, and then the cool thing is on the attendees panel, it's like live, you're seeing all that come up and it gives you a lot of communication as an instructor while you're, while you're facilitating to see instantly like what's going on with the students if you pull that attendees pilot out. So then you can see both at the same time. That is genius. Hey, look, uh, Ms. Nauman, you could have told me slower. <laughs> <laughs> so it is powerful. There's just a lot of little um, great tools that we can use, especially when we're teaching virtually. Are you on the ADL course, Ms. Nauman? I, I teach in JIPAC and um, contingency course. Oh, okay. So you guys have been doing your, um, you guys have been doing your stuff virtual then. Yes, but in Google Meet. That's right. All right, so I'm going to lower my dude. And then um, anything else in Collaborate before um, we let Mr. Eric show us something cool in Blackboard? I'm gonna stop sharing. And I then when you guys wanna, yes ma'am? Oh, I was just gonna say that there's a big difference between Google Meet and Collaborate when you're talking about being able to control your students. So in Collaborate, because you set them up as participants, they have sort of a limited control inside the platform and you can control those off-sided comments or those conversations. They can't do as much as they could do if you're in Google Meet. Anybody who just comes into Google Meet, they can stop your recording. They can do all kinds of crazy things. They can click a button and mess something up. So like in Collaborate, because they're participants, you you have more control as a, as a moderator, as a facilitator. So that's that's one thing I would just say is that make sure you look at those settings when you're setting up your session and make sure it says what you want it to say because you can stop them from having individual conversations or individual chats or even being able to share anything. And so it gives you more control. Liz Scott, I just remembered, you raised your hand twice. Were you just playing with like the functions or did you have something? Yeah. Now she left the session. Bye, man. All right. Okay. Well, she, I was going to show y'all how to leave the session, but we'll just ask Liz. No, I'm just. Yeah, yeah. I think she might have just been messing around. All right. So this little hamburger at the top. Oh, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. I'm going to leave this session. This excellence. Mit and exit. <laughs> All righty. Would you, um, did you want to present, Eric? Uh, you know, I think that's, if you just mute yours and turn off the light, I can Too well, easy. guide you through. It'll, it'll help you. Okay, so something that I noticed that Audrey didn't have on her Blackboard, so if you can close out of the, uh, the course that you're in. Just one simple little thing that will save you so much time. So you're in courses right now. And that's where you want to be. Audrey, scroll down to your course. Which one is it? Zero. Okay. Do you see the star over to the right? Click it. And now every time you go into courses, well, okay, close, close out of that again. If you scroll up to the top of courses, there's your course, so now you have it as a favorite. So any courses that you have, if you just click that little star, it puts it at the top of the page. I know that for my last class, it was all, it was like three quarters of the way down the page and it just was kind of annoying to have to scroll down through that all the time. Also, Blackboard scrolling is not the best kind of scrolling uh, in the world. So just one of those real simple things that can save you, you know, 30 seconds here or there. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
Thank you, Eric. You've just saved probably like three hours of my lifetime from scrolling to this course so much. Um, okay, so we went over Collaborate. What time is it? Okay, it's 2.17, I think we're still good. Um, one thing that Pax brought up was um, how to, do we have, hold on, let me pull up my email once I can find the screen, which is beyond. Here we go. Okay. So making changes within a course. And some of the things I guess that were brought up by um, team leads from PAX was, you know, updating rubrics and, ev and updating evaluation items, so exams. Before uh, we go any further with that, there is a very large process, um, not a very large process actually, it should, be, it should be simple, but as instructors, you know, their, their master lesson plans, um, not the lesson plans, but rubrics and tests take, they're the way that they are for a reason, and if we need to make a change, the bottom line is we have to go through our AD and then submit that to CDO. Right. So while we possibly could have the um, authority to change it in Blackboard, we don't actually have the authority to change it at all. We need to submit our justification to our ADs and go through the proper chain of command or channels to make that change happen. OK. Um, no, I'm not. I'm saying that because I asked Jen Howard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so now when it comes to material in our course, we absolutely can, if we wanted to take out our slides, thank you, Eric. Now I don't have to scroll down and you guys don't have to wait for me to scroll down to go to my course. We can go in edit mode and we can go to our content. Let's go over here and let's say I wanna just put my personalized lesson plans Oh, yes, Is Mr. Listicow. Do you mean if we're trying to change the rubric or if you realize you made a mistake, please? I mean change the criteria within a rubric. That's what I mean. Thank you. So I'm going to go in here to week one. Go to five W's in storytelling. Five W's. Go to edit. This isn't the one I want. Hold on, let me back up. Training day, where was that? Training day three. Here we go. Okay, this is what I want. Over here. So for five W's in storytelling, these are all the things that, you know, our students can go through and see. And maybe we want to, um, I like this one by Ira Glass. Maybe we want to change it. Oh, no. So we're going to click over here on this little down arrow. And you can edit it. You can make it unavailable. Now, one thing that Jen Howard did tell me is while we can upload new things, like build content right here, this is where you would add your content. So maybe I want to add a file or an item or uh, a video, right? We can do video and it'll link straight to YouTube. Um, lesson plans are usually not what we are going to do. We will, we can add our personalized lesson plans in terms of slides and maybe put some little nuggets that our students can, you know, resources that we give them. We can add that. This is how we add that there. One thing we can't do is delete stuff out of our courses, but what we can do is hide them if we don't want our students to you know, if we have like the DINFO set of slides that um, CDO comes out with and we don't want them to like get confused on which one they should read, we want them to read our personalized ones, we'll go to um, make unavailable, right? And our students won't be able to see the DINFO slides. What else? So that's how you add content to your course. Does everybody got that? Do you want me to redo that over again if I went too fast? So here I can add something. I'll just show you um, slides. 
Let's see, storytelling slides. Are you wise? Story, that's my high school story. I am no, I like to story tell, but I'll tell you what, I am no speller. And attachments, right? So browse local files. Oh, content collection is a good one too because um, what it'll do is it'll go to our MCF sandbox where a lot of things already are, but our courses in MCF are, are set up the way that they should be. So all the information is already in there. The only reason for MCF anyway, if we would want to change something would be to put our personal stuff in there. So let's go to, um, I guess storytelling somewhere in here. Oh, well, I'll just do this. Student slides. See, and there they are. I can submit this. And they should pop up somewhere around here, right here. Yep. Um, and you have the oppor or the uh, not opportunity, but the um, the option to move these wherever you want. You know, maybe you want them at the top. So any way that your students go through and receive their information um, or their their class materials, you can, you know, maybe I want you to read this first before you get into the video. You can do that. And that's pretty much it for adding content to, you know, just our weekly or our class. Does anyone have any questions on that? I'm going to delete this right here. Delete. Yes. Okay. That's, that's it. All right. For the next thing, this one's going to be a little bit of a discussion more um, because I actually do not have access to PaxQ. Can I get? Um, so, if there is a PaxQ representative in the house. Uh, could you tell me if you guys just strictly work on Ultra? Because I'm if it does, then that would mean that your what you see in Blackboard looks pretty different for me. Is is that true from any of the PaxQ instructors? Uh, yeah, Audrey, uh, this is James Sahadi. Wait, I can't hear a thing. Oh, I'm muted. Yeah, can you hear me, Audrey? Yes, I can. To, to my knowledge, uh, there's a few instructors here from PaxQ, but I think Ultra is the only one that we use. Yes. And so do you go, um, are you familiar with it, Mr. Sahadi? A little bit. Yeah, I've been getting more, more familiar with the Ultra as far as going in, looking at rubrics, getting their assignments from the students, putting grades in. Once you get used to it, like you said, I think it, you know, tends to grow on you and it's going to be the platform here to stay. But I think that's the one that we use uh, primarily is Ultra. So my question is, um, does it look different than what you're seeing right now, what I'm presenting? It's it's similar. It's, I wouldn't say it's totally different, but it, it, it looks similar to the features, how, how we access it. It doesn't okay, look totally good. different. Because um, I guess some students were having issues over on the pack side with navigating um, through Ultra and, and getting to their materials. And I don't actually have access to it, so I can't show you what it's supposed to look like. Um, but I do know that in Ultra, students have the ability to decide which way they want to view the course. And what they can do is, you know, it's meant, Ultra was made so that it would be easily, easy to navigate on a, a cell phone or a tablet or a computer, whatever you happen to be working on. Um, so perhaps Jen was telling me that uh, perhaps students, depending on what device they're on, should change it to that device and they wouldn't have an issue navigating as much but she walked me through it and it didn't seem it didn't seem difficult so what you see right here what we have in our content you know we click on this and then it goes into week one and then you click on week one and it goes into all the training days and it's pretty similar except the only difference is let me go back to content 
is instead of me just clicking on this, there's a little like plus sign right in between these different items. And when you click on that plus sign, instead of going to a whole new page, this week one would just drop down. So where are my hey, content? Hey, Audrey, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I actually have access to that layout that you're describing. So if you'd like, I can share my screen and and kind of show the group what what I think it is you're trying to talk about. Yeah, I would I would love I would love that. And if you can speak on maybe some of the navigational issues that students have, I don't know if you if you have that same issue. I'll stop presenting. Thanks, Andy. Okay, one moment. Take your time. Okay, so hopefully at this point you should be able to see my screen. What this is, is um, like the team two breakout for a PAX Q iteration. So there's typically three teams within an iteration and they operate independently within their own Blackboard classrooms. Um, I'm not super familiar with it because I kind of adjunct to the course and I don't deal with it on the day to day. We, in my experience, I've only used it to provide content to in-resident students, um, not to facilitate DL students. So I do teach DL on Blackboard, but it is in the classic Blackboard um, format. So with this um, format that we're talking about now, the Collaborate Ultra. So this is what this is what it looks like. And what I'll do here is just go down. You can see I've opened up week one, training days one through four. Once I click on this, then it expands that menu and you're able to see how the content is broken down. Now, this may differ from one team to the next, and I really don't know. Once again, I'm not really prepared to speak on how and why this stuff is structured the way it is, but just to try to show you that this is here. So you can click on day one, and you're able to see what other, whatever items are available to the students that day. Let's look at the overview because that breaks down even further, I think. And this is where, as an adjunct instructor, for example, if my job was to teach a class to this iteration on this day, then I could preload my slides, you know, the student slide deck, and make that available to them prior to the class or after or whenever I wanted to. Um, and that's primarily what I did. And so in order to do that, I would identify the topic um, or the class that I'm teaching. So if it was this nesting and strategic alignment, you could see I can go into edit and I can identify, I can, up, you know, insert links and files into that space. And that's how I, that's basically the extent of how I used it. Any questions on that? I can't hear anything. Um, should I stop presenting? No, um, that was great, actually. And I was thinking that, you know, what I just showed you guys in Blackboard Classic on how to upload content and hide content, to me, that seems a lot easier. Right? Yeah, the way Andy did it. Like, let me get Ultra. <laughs> yeah, um, so my, my problem is um, I don't know how to transition that experience, and if I can, from a Classic to the Ultra. Right? Is it a copy paste of the content and just kind of working in the formatting, or do you have to really kind of create it from scratch? And I don't know. And for what it's worth, there's only two more iterations of that uh, class in that format that I'm going to teach because it's getting redesigned and we're going to roll it out in a different way. Yeah, that I would definitely. If that is a, a question that you have, if you're going to uh, moving to Ultra, I would um, ask Jen Howard. You know, if there's a way to like import the material from um, a content collection maybe because I know Blackboard has a lot of content collections in there and we can kind of whenever we're if we're creating a course from scratch we should be able to pull everything from that content collection and, and add it into a, a, a course so but if anyone has any any questions anything they want to talk about the floor is yours um, I went through everything that I had on our agenda today, um, and I want to get y'all out of here.
So whether you're ready for the weekend or not, um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I, I've got one alibi, Audrey. Um, if, yes, sir. If, if you don't mind, and we can sort this out, um, you know, offline immediately after. But I was just wondering if you had any experience with um, creating groups within Blackboard Classic. Let's say you've got, you know, 24 students and you want to pair them up. So how do you form 12 groups in, in the Classic so that for the purposes of assignments, they can mm -hmm. each uh, submit to the same place, you know? So the difference would be like, I could tell everybody that I've broken them down into groups and I can convey that to an email, but within Blackboard, it's possible to structure it so that they submit their assignments and it receives them in their, their group order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into CMC's class. Sorry guys. Um, and in here, what? Did I do something bad? No, I said, I said, oh, I thought you said oops. No. Um, we have, uh, or CMC has group assignments, right? And in here, in groups, you can create, so, and each group will be tailored to that assignment, Andy, just like you were saying. Um, and you'll see that there's groups of three for campaign in, um, we have an internet campaign and in uh, what is that? Uh, IB uh, design critique group where the students would go in a group and um, critique each other's graphics from their shop, right? And um, in these groups is how you add people. Um, but it also has to be linked to an assignment. I believe. I think you have to make the assignment first, if I'm not mistaking. Um, it's been a long time since I've done it, but Mr. Holbert or Sergeant Pagan. Don't go put me on the spot for this. <laughs> All yeah. right. Same. I'm here because I want to learn. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, what, were, yeah. what was the question? I was eating some summer pasta my wife made me. No, um, so manual enroll. This is what you would do if you were trying to add people into the group. Um, uh, actually, so Sergeant Bagan handles all our group stuff, so he might know. I do. I okay, are, are we sharing something with us, Audrey? No, I was just, so Andy was asking about, um, you know, making groups, like pre-making groups for assignments within his course. And so I was showing him on Blackboard how we could do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know how to do that. Yeah, it's been quite a long time. So okay. if you wanna let me let me open up Blackboard and then I'll oh, present. You guys can't, yeah, I wasn't even sharing my screen. Easily. That's why I was confused. I got you though. Yeah. Give me, well, give me one second. Yeah, so for I don't know, for while while he's doing that for context, you know, up until this point I was able to keep the assignments individual because I believe there was more value, you know, for example, and that one on one feedback, but these iterations have been plussed up to like, I think I've got 31 students right now. So I'm, I, I have to um, put them into groups for the sake of time. I'm not able to provide individual feedback to all of them. So this is helpful for me uh, to know how to do, because it's been a while. I used to do it, but I'm just not proficient with this particular uh, task in Blackboard. I appreciate it. Hey, Sergeant Pagan, right. if you want, I can share uh, my my screen and you can just. I got it now. It was just, I, it kept kicking me out. Every time I logged in, it would give me an error message, but I'm in now. Right on. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right, everyone can see this? Yes, you yep. can. All right. So you want to be in edit mode? All right, let me start from the beginning, actually, right? We should, so you're in courses, you go into the, the course that you're you're working from. And then you want to be in edit mode, make sure edit mode is on. And then you just go to the groups tab down here on the left. Click on groups. And then here are all your 
your specific groups for the entire course. The little carrot, upside down carrot, click on that and then you can edit group. And then once this loads, at the very bottom, you can add users and remove users. So what we do is outside of Blackboard, we create a spreadsheet with all the groups we want. And then we just copy and paste over into each individual group. And then once you add them, you, you submit it and then you go through and you do that to every single group that you have. You just continue to edit, scroll to the bottom, add the students that you want in that group, submit, and then uh, that's pretty much it, right? Did I answer the question? 100%. And then, uh, so once the students are in those groups too, it's important to point out um, if they're like groups change, like we had uh, two uh, student kept of personal issues, so we had to change a group around. Um, students are only able to see their groups once you assign them to a group. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a pretty simple tutorial. That's basically all I was looking for. And the, the catch here is that you have to do that for all individual assignments, right? You can't blanket a group and assign it broadly. That's correct, yes, sir. Yeah, we just, I, I copy and paste all the information in between the groups and then the names. Yes, I have to go through and individually add them. Yeah, it's tedious. I get it. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that. Um, You're welcome. From you guys as well. And that's all I have for the group. Um, Mr. Gatewood, Ms. Anderson, you guys have anything for our friends? No. I have nothing for the group. I'm good. All right. Well, thank you guys for attending our Blackboard training today, and I hope you guys have a lovely weekend, and I'll catch you on Monday. Thanks, Audrey. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>